Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. I haven't done a tier ranking video in a very, very long time. There were just no ideas to tier rank, nothing that I sparked my interest to tier rank anything, but I just recently made a five-star reads video with all my five-star reads that are like true five-star reads, but for this video, I'm tier ranking all five-star reads from even the beginning of my reading journey. Like we are going back to 2020 me. Which, if you don't know, any videos I made back then, if you're watching any of my old videos, my rating system was different, how I felt about books was different, I didn't have anything to go off and base off of, you know, comparing books and seeing what I like and stuff. It was just I read a book and if I thought it was good, it was a five star, you know? Now I am more picky with them. I went on my Goodreads and I'm pretty sure I have everything I've ever rated a five star read on this tier ranking thing, so I'm gonna link this down below. I don't think that you can like switch it out and input the books that you've given five stars, but you can use this if you have similar five star reads to me if you want to tier rank them or if you want to use this as inspiration. I don't know but we're gonna tier rank them together i have a few tiers obviously i'm gonna go through them and we're just gonna see what i think about my five star reads now i love tier ranking because you can see on like a scale of how the books really are in your opinion like seeing them visually and it's gonna be very interesting what books are like at the top and which books are like lower you know because all my five star reads are five stars for different reasons obviously the ones from back in the day aren't really how I feel now, but the recent ones and the ones that are true five stars, I love them all for different reasons. So it's gonna be very interesting to see where they land on this tier ranker. That's what today's video is. I hope you guys enjoy. We're gonna get right into it. I'm so excited. Again, I haven't tier ranked in so long, so this is gonna be fun. So let's go through every tier that I have. So starting at the top is inject this into my veins. These books are higher than five stars, higher than six stars. I want these injected into my bloodstream. I want this book tattooed onto me. This will be one of my favorite books forever. Just books or book. I don't know how many are gonna be in this tier, but it's just books slash book. That is just the best of the best, in my opinion. My favorite read ever reads ever. I don't know if it's gonna be plural or not. Then underneath that we have six star read. So this is above five star. I had the five star feeling obviously, but it's like higher than that. Like the feeling I got is just like none other. It's not injected into my veins level high, but it is higher than a five star read. Then we have just a valid five star. Like this is a five star for me. Like there was nothing really wrong with it in my opinion. It has everything that I wanted. I loved it from beginning to end. I would recommend it to literally anyone. I probably have recommended it and you've probably heard me talk about it a bajillion times. Underneath that we have comfort books. Now I feel like there's some five star reads that are more of like a book I would reread multiple times and just is a feel-good book to me like it's not the most amazingly written story it's not the most lyrical it's not the most like crazy story it's just one that i could reread and just have comfort in that book then we have i changed my rating now we're getting to the tiers that are like okay i don't think these are five stars anymore when i first read it maybe i got the five star feeling but then over time i haven't really thought about the book i don't know there's just some books that i feel like i give five stars in the moment and then after i read more books as time goes on i don't really think of them as five stars anymore so i could change my rating even if it goes down to like a 4.75 or 4.5. There's some books that I wouldn't have at a five star anymore, even though I loved them during the time of reading them. Right underneath that, the last tier is This Was the Old Me. So this is books that are just like not five stars. They're books that I read in the beginning of my reading journey, like I said, and just books that I don't think are five stars anymore. It's not me and my preferences of books anymore. I just don't think that they are on a five star level. And these are probably the books that are not in my five star reads video that I posted a few weeks ago because it was the old me. It's not me anymore. We're gonna get right into it. There's 43 books on my list, so... Let's talk about all of my five-star reads. Starting off strong, this was actually a book I read again, like 2020, 2021. I think it was 2020. This was like the beginning of my reading journey again. I was reading a lot of like literary fiction books and like I feel like adult drama books almost, like Leanne Moriarty. This book is called The Husband's Secret by her. I remember reading it and just being so obsessed, but it also wasn't reading at the time, so I don't remember if it's actually a really good book. And it had like a little bit of a mystery undertone in it. It was really fun. It's definitely not a five-star anymore, but I don't think it's a bad book, so I think I just changed my rating. I definitely would never read it again. I never really recommend it but I remember having a really good time reading it like obviously it was one of the books that got me back into reading so it was that for a reason but it's not really the old me like it's not something I wouldn't recommend I just don't really talk about it it's just in the beginning of my journey then we have love in other words by Christina Lauren this is a comfort book this book I could reread a bajillion times and it just makes me feel good I could read it in any season and it would hit I'm obsessed with the characters in the story and it really showed me that I love second chance childhood friends lovers like that romance tropes those romance tropes are my favorite and it was one of the first ones that I read that I just like fell in love with the story and the characters and it's one that literally is just a comfort like I think of it and I could probably just pick it up and read it and just feel comforted. Next we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This one I always think about but I still stand by saying this is a five star but I think it's just like a valid five star like it's nothing crazy but I remember loving the story. It was just so fast paced. It's a YA mystery if you haven't read it yet. It's a trilogy but the first one especially I just loved going along with Pip and just being in her point of view and figuring out things with her. It was just very entertaining and I loved the little plot twist at the end but it's just a valid five star. I feel like it's nothing 
something crazy, but I do love it. Okay, then we have Kiss the Sky by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is part of the Calloway Sisters little spinoff from the Addicted series. My favorite book from the whole series. I haven't finished it. I have two more still but it's literally my favorite rose and connor are my favorite couple from the whole entire series i'm obsessed with them they're literally my parents my favorite book out of all of them and i know they have another one that i read fuel the fire but this one it was just like the beginning of them getting together and like their story and like their backstory and how they like became a couple and i was obsessed so this one i think this one would be a six star read and i know i never really talk about it but they are truly like my favorite couple if you ever ask me my favorite book couple there's a few i would say but i know rose and connor are definitely on that list then we have things we hide from the light so this is part of the knock em out series and this was the newest release the third one is coming out in september really really soon i'm really excited about it but this was the most recent release and this one is about nash and lena i think her name is it's the brother from the first one so this one honestly i think i would change my rating i gave it five stars because i love lucy scores writing i loved the characters in it because i absolutely loved things I never got over but I don't like it as much as the first one because I love Nox and Naomi's story and that whole thing it kind of introduced me to Lucy Score's writing and I was just I loved it so much but this one I think I would end up giving like four and a half stars like not anything lower like a lot lower than five star but not a five star I never really think about Nash and Lena or the story I just know I love the setting and the, the location and the other characters and it was a good read I love Lucy Score's books but I think this one I would put back into like a four and a half star so definitely would change my rating but like not really anything crazy okay so there's a few Shatter Me books on here and I have no idea which ones these are from so this one is shadow me and i think it's a novella and i gave it five stars so i don't know if it was maybe it was in warner's point of view i don't remember which one this was like at all i don't know like i literally don't know i don't know if i would change my rating because i know i loved the series so maybe i would say just a valid five star i have no idea because all of those are like mixed up in my head i know there's a few that stand out to me that i love this one i don't remember but it's just a short novella and i probably just like i was obsessed with it because it's like really into the story and i loved that story so i guess it's a valid five star i literally have no idea which order that's in which number book this is but i know it's a novella okay then we have addicted for now by chris and becca ritchie which one is this one i don't know which number of the series this one is in but this is lily and Lowe's book i didn't love their first few books i will say they weren't my favorite and they're not my favorite couple from the whole series but i loved their character development and seeing them grow and i remember reading this one i think this one's like the, i don't know which which order this one's in but this one i think is a valid five star because i remember ending up like loving them and their story so yeah really nothing to say about this one but it definitely is a five star read because i remember reading these books and just being obsessed with the whole like found family and the whole dynamic and the actual family so we have hot house flower which is also part of the series but this is with the calloway sisters little spinoff this is daisy's story this one i think i would also put in a six star read because rose and con are my favorite but daisy and Reich they are also my favorite i think the calloway sisters little spinoff part of the addicted series is my favorite stories that came out of it and hot house flower was such like a pivotal moment in like the whole found family and family like the whole trajectory of the rest of the books like this was a pivotal moment especially like their relationship and like figuring out their stuff and like in front of everyone one. I remember being just so obsessed with this one so definitely a six star read again I don't really talk about these ones too much because I read them a bit ago but I know they are some of my favorite books I thread by Lucy score so this one I remember reading and I just got like this giddy feeling like I was just like so obsessed with the banter and the slow burn and the like, chemistry and the tension that they had and it was such a good build-up and I was just like giddy the whole time I loved it I thought it was so fun it's not one that I think is like a six star read but it's one that I remember just loving and it was just like a feel-good like fun book and I loved the ending of it so I don't know if it's a valid five star or a comfort book because i don't know that it's like a comfort but it feels like a comfort book like i feel like i could open that book and like read any part of it and just like love it i feel like it's a comfort book which sounds really weird because it's not like a i feel like love in other words gives me cozy vibes but this one i don't know i'm just gonna put it in the comfort books i love their story i love those two yeah that, feel, that feels right. Alice Feeney, His and Hers. This one I thought about when I was talking about it in my five-star video. I was like debating not putting it in there, but I do remember reading it and like loving this one because the plot twist really got me. I was like on the edge of my seat trying to figure it out. I had so many theories and it's like, I love reading her books and trying to figure out what's gonna happen because she always gets me, but I do think I would change my rating to this one to a 4.5 because the plot twist was so good in my opinion. It got me really good, but like, I don't think it's the five star and I could be wrong. You know, this is just me right now in this moment. I Maybe I would give it like 4.75, but I feel like every time I think about this book, it's like, is it a five star? And I feel like once you start questioning it, it's like, okay, maybe it's not. Cause I feel like you know when your books are five or six stars, you know? So I think I would change that. Again, nothing crazy, but just a little bit lower. Then we have Ricochet. I think this is the, I actually don't know the order. I don't know why I keep trying to guess, but this one is part of the Addicted Calloway Sisters. It's not my favorite. I think I would change my rating of this one. I have literally no idea what happens in this book. I do not remember. I just remember reading this series and the beginning of the series, I read back to back. So I was like going through them really fast and like going through the stories and like I was really in the world, but I just don't think I would give it five stars. 
I don't know what I would give it. Maybe I would give it like a four, four and a half. Like I just don't remember it. And I feel like I should remember my five star reads. You know, I should remember at least some scenes that are in it. I have absolutely no idea what happens in that book. Magnolia Parks, The Long Way Home. So this is the second Magnolia Parks book, but in the whole series, it's the third book after the first Daisy Hates. We all know where this is going, right? Like we all know which tier I'm about to put this in literally inject this into my bloodstream. I want this whole book tattooed all over my body. I live and breathe this book, this series. I know I always talk about this and you guys are probably sick of me talking about it, but I just like something about it completely changed me as a reader. And I just don't think I could ever read a book that's got... <laughs> Why am I speechless? I don't think I could ever read a book again that could make me feel the way that this series made me feel. Genuinely don't think any series will ever live up to it, any book will ever live up to it. Unless Jessa, when she comes out with her new books, new series, it's a possibility. Her writing is literally one of the loves of my life. Like, I'm obsessed. So I want this injected into my veins and I want it pumping through my bloodstream. Anyway. Next is Ghosted by J.M. Darhauer. This one I remember reading and just kind of going into a little bit blind. I knew what the story was about, but I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. It's a second chance romance, childhood friends to lovers, and that's like some of my favorite tropes, like I've said. This one really got me. It's also a single parent, which I usually don't love, but the way it was said was so beautiful. The story just felt really real. It felt very like realistic in a way, and I was up obsessed with it. So I think this one would be a comfort book, which I know sounds a little interesting. And again, I don't really talk about this one too much. I feel like it's so underrated. I feel like if you haven't read this one, you really should. It's so good. This is another one where I feel like I could just open it up and just like be comforted by the story and the characters. That's it. That's how I feel about that one. Now we have a Colleen Hoover book. This is Losing Hopes. This is the one that's after Hopeless. And this is in, I forgot his name. Literally read this so long ago, but it's in the guy's point of view from the first book, like the whole story, but his point of view. And I actually enjoyed this more than the Hopeless. I remember because his point of view, if you know the story of Hopeless at least, like his point of view was crazy because of what he knew throughout Hopeless. It's like a lot that happened in that book. And I really did enjoy it, but just like, I think if I read it now, I just would definitely feel differently. I think the writing style was definitely more for me as a beginning reader, like back when I started reading again, like they were entertaining for me. So this one now, I definitely would change my rating. This was definitely the old me, but like, I don't think it's like my least favorite book on my five star list that I would be like, okay, this is old me. But I would change my rating. I probably, if I think back on this, I'd give it like three and a half, but I remember reading it and just loving his point of view. Cause I really enjoyed Hopeless when I first read it. But like, I feel like now it just would be completely different. Then we have the Mindfuck series by S.D. Abbey and this one I think I would put in my six star reads. Again, I feel like I don't really talk about some of these books a lot. Maybe I do. But this series, I remember absolutely binging. I got to the fifth book. This is, if you don't know, it's a five book series, but you can read it all in one book because they're kind of short. And I remember reading it and I got to the last one and I prolonged that ending. I did not want to finish it. I was just obsessed with the story because it reminded me of Criminal Minds a lot mixed with like a romance. And those were like two of my favorite things at the time. And when I think about it, it's just one of those stories that I just don't think I will ever read like another story like that again. I was so, so obsessed. It was so good. Definitely a six star read. I'm obsessed with that series. Then we have Heart of the Raven Prince by Tassan. Odette. This is part of the Entangled with Faye series. This one is a Cinderella retelling and it was my first like retelling story kind of fairy tale-esque fa fantasy. Sitting in my headphones when I was reading this to so, like Taylor Swift instrumental like it really gave the vibes when I was reading it so I'm kind of between a comfort book or a valid five star and this is a valid five star. This is just a good old five star. The story was just fun. It wasn't hard to get into. I knew the background story obviously of Cinderella so it was very easy to understand and easy to follow along but you mix in a little twist on the romance and the fae and the magic system and it was just really fun and I love the fairy tale fantasy vibe. Okay, then we have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I read this like a long time ago. I think this was like right before I got the first height of its like popularity before it like absolutely blew up. I feel like if I didn't read this book, but I picked it up now after seeing it all over the place, I would know what it's about and know like all of the like trigger warnings and like what's going on in the book. But when I first read this, I didn't know what it was about and like what truly happens within the storyline. So I was like caught off guard by like what kind of unraveled because you're rooting for the main character, but then like things go wrong. It's like, oh wait, what's going on? So I did enjoy it when I first read it. I thought it was such a good story. If I read it now, I probably would be a little bit cringed by some parts of it. I definitely think this was the old me. I would probably wouldn't give this five stars now. I just don't think that the writing style of her books are for me as a reader now. Then we have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This one I remember reading and I didn't read a lot of like mystery thrillers at that time. So reading this one, it was just one of the ones that really got me. It kind of left me on the edge of my seat. The plot twist got me and I was just like obsessed that I completely binged it. This one, I don't know if it's a six star or if it's a valid five star. I know I recommend it all the time, but 
I don't have a lot of other mystery thrillers that like I'm obsessed with so I think it's just a valid five star like I loved it binged it was obsessed with the ending and this got me in my Alice Feeney binge I'm Alice Feeney's number one fan so yeah valid five star okay then we have Divine Rivals this is one of my more recent five star reads I remember waking up and it was like 7 a.m I had no books that I was like lined up to read and I was like scrolling through good reads I was scrolling through kindle books and I wanted to read on my kindle found this on kindle unlimited I literally went into it almost blind I read the summary of it but I was like okay let me just try it out let me read like a first few chapters and we'll try it out and I remember I just couldn't put it down I was telling my friends you guys need to read this with me like something's going on this is so good but then the story just takes like a total turn I was so 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 obsessed the writing was beautiful the storyline was great I it was such a twist on like fantasies that I've read like I've never really read a fantasy like this it was more of like a historical fantasy so this is one of my six star reads absolutely absolutely obsessed with this book if you haven't read it yet definitely do I know it's getting a lot of hype right now definitely read it okay the next one is every summer after by Carly Fortune I read this I think two summers ago I think when I read when it came out around that time was it two summers ago I don't think it was last summer wait I can't remember but I read it when it first came out and one of my favorite books as we see on this list is love and other words so I was told it was a mix between love and other words beach read and like all these books that I love and I was like okay I'm gonna read it so right off the bat I remember reading it and be like this is like too similar to love and other words but since love and other words is one of my favorite books ever I was like but I'm loving it you know like I love the second chance as childhood friends and also the ending of it I guessed why they didn't talk for how many years reading it at that moment it didn't ick me out but as time went on and I thought about that ending and just like something I don't love in books I would 100% change my rating every time I think about it I just can't justify the fact that they would still be together after everything that's gone down so I probably would end up giving this like three and a half four stars and not that it was a bad book I like I loved this book I thought the story was great it was a great writing it did just feel a little bit too copy and paste but also the ending it was obviously different than love in other words and there were some things that were different but it just icks me out when I think about it I'm like I can't root for them so how can I give it five stars if I don't root for them you know then we have defy me again this is part of the shatter me series but I think it's close to the end of it and I don't remember giving this five stars I probably changed my rating on here or was it a valid I don't know because I love this series I think I'm just gonna do a valid five star I don't know I love the series I'm just gonna keep them there I all of them like mixed together because it's such a long series so I don't know what really happened in them specifically but I did love this series so much so we'll keep it there Okay, then we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. So this was my second Colleen Hoover book. Again, it was like right when I got back into reading again. And I was like back to back reading Colleen Hoover books because I didn't know like what authors to go for. I wasn't really watching like recommendation videos or like trying to look out for recommendations online and stuff. I was kind of just going by what I found on like my Kindle and stuff. So some parts were very disturbing. Like I enjoyed it and it was very fast paced and I think I read it in like a day. I don't know if I would change my rating on this. I'm like trying to think back of like what actually happened in that book. I don't know because I feel like now reading these kind Colleen Hoover books. I don't know what I would feel. So I probably changed my rating. Magnolia Parks, the first book. Obviously we know where this is going. We're injecting this into my veins. Sometimes I'll pick it up and I'll just like annotate a few pages at a time that I've been just, I've been doing that over the past few months. And it's just crazy how Jessa Hastings created this world and these characters and there's so many little breadcrumbs and little hints in that first book that are so prevalent and explained in the second Magnolia Parks book. Like I was reading it and I was like 40 pages in and there's like this huge thing that happens in the second Magnolia Parks but it's just like flat out on the page in the first one and you just don't know because you don't know anything that happens and you don't know like the background for anything. I remember reading this book and just feeling all the feels and I know it's such like a frustrating story and I don't care. I love it. Okay, then we have Darling Venom. This one I read a few years ago. I felt like a little bit different, a little bit of a twist on a regular romance story. Like this one had a, like, I feel like a little bit more deeper meanings, but it also had like the romance and the spice and like all the fun stuff, but also had like the deeper meanings and the more like touching, sad stuff that was included. So this one I think is a valid five star. I still keep it on my five star list though, because I remember reading and just being obsessed with the story and the characters. I thought it was really fun, but also again, it had like the other meanings with it. Then we have Happy Place by Emily Henry. Every time I think about this, book I feel like the main character is just so me like, the way that the main character was like talking about her post college life and like navigating relationships while boyfriend family friends school jobs like it's just she was at such a pivotal moment in her life and that was like I really connected with it but also I just loved the storyline like I just thought it was so good I thought her writing was beautiful in this one so this one might be a six star read like I was obsessed and I didn't think going into it I was gonna be obsessed but I truly was and I loved that book then we have Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover so this book I read right after Verity I remember finishing Verity and I was like okay I need another Colleen Hoover book because again I didn't know where to get recommendations from and like what authors to go for and whatever so I was just like on a binge and I think this is the old me I didn't really 
really pick up on a lot of things that like happen in that book until years later people talking about it and I just feel like it's not one I would stand by a five star rating for so definitely would change that rating. The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. This was around the same time I was reading The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty and this one was just like a little bit of a literary fiction mixed with a mystery and I thought it was so fun. I the ending being a little underwhelming but again it was the beginning of my journey. I was like no five star read like obviously thinking back on it i don't think it's a five star but i don't think i would change my rating just because it's such like a important book in my reading journey so this one i think i would put in my comfort books because i just don't think that i could change my rating because it was just such an important book to me when i first started my journey and i think this is becoming a tv show or a movie or something like that i actually cannot wait to watch that. Okay, then we have Restore Me. Now, this is one of the Shadow Me books that I actually remember being obsessed with. I feel like the first few is just getting into the story and like a lot of background, a lot of buildup, but getting into Restore Me and Ignite Me, the story just got so, so, so good. And I remember being obsessed with this one. So this one is definitely a valid five star. Then we have Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This one was another recent five star read. This one I think I would put in my six star read because I remember my like physical reactions to this book was literally like I never react like out loud to books, usually just in my head I'm reacting. I had like gasping, I had giggling, I had kicking my feet, like it was just like so good it got me to like literally physically react to this book. The fantasy part of it was so good because it was so like fast paced and entertaining and just like adrenaline rushing but then you get like the romance that was just so much tension building and the banter was so good and the ending was so good. I cannot wait for this whole series so definitely a six star read. I was like obsessed with this book. Or I am obsessed with this book. Okay, then we have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I remember reading this when it first came out from Book of the Month. And I remember being obsessed because it was just like a cutesy, fast-paced little romance story. And I loved Adam Carlson. And I loved this story. And I remember giving it a five star right after finishing it. So I don't know if I would keep it a five star. I feel like this could be a comfort book. Not really. I never really think about it. Maybe I would change my rating. I don't know. Right now, in this moment, I would give it like a four and a half. I feel like it's not like a five star feeling book, but I do remember absolutely eating it up. Okay, then we have If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. So this one, it was in my Reading Sad Books for a Week video, and I remember reading this and just couldn't stop thinking about it for weeks after. I was watching TikToks every day. I was looking at reviews. I was going back into the book and reading my annotations. Like, it was that type of book. It really got me. So this one's definitely a six star read. Like, I don't know. It was just like the writing was so different, but it was so good, and it was kind of like almost monotone but I loved it and I loved the feeling of like the high school setting and the characters and everything about it and the ending and all of it was just so good to me. We have November 9th by Colleen Hoover and this is another one where I remember reading it and just like I was on a Colleen Hoover binge. I think this is like everyone's canon event and everyone's beginning reader journey. Not everyone, majority of people. I feel like the first author you hear of is Colleen Hoover. This one I definitely think was the old me because every time I hear people talking about it I like think of more things that happened in that book so after reading these so long ago I completely block them out from my memory. When people start reading it or I see someone talking about it I'm like oh wow that's what I read? I don't think I would give this five stars. Was it an entertaining story? Yeah I feel like all of her books are entertaining but not a five star. Then we have Ignite Me. This was my favorite book out of the whole entire Shadow Me series. I don't know if it was a six star, but I definitely was a valid five star read. The whole entire series, I keep saying, is a five star read or a five star series, but this was the best one out of the whole series in my opinion. This one and Restore Me were so, so good. Like this was the whole like turning point of the of the whole series. It, oh, it was so good. Okay, then we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is part of the Six of Crows duology. I didn't read Shadow and Bone. I went right into Six of Crows and I feel like if I read Shadow and Bone first, I probably would have given Six of Crows a five star, but I didn't know the world and you understand the world more with Shadow and Bone, but I went right into Six of Crows. You don't have to read Shadow and Bone, but it like helps you understand the world and I didn't do that. So the beginning of Six of Crows was a little difficult for me to get into it, but then I read the second one and I was obsessed because I understood the world, the characters I was like so connected with and I'm obsessed. This is a six star read. This book was so good. The found family, the different characters, the storyline, the fantasy, the world, amazing. I want more of these characters. Then we have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one, I think I read last year, the end of last year or something like that. And I didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I did, but the format of it in the interview style was just so intriguing. I've never read a book like that. And it just felt like I was reading like a real interview, a real band story. And I loved it like so much. And I loved the ending, the whole thing. I have to finish the TV series. I think I have one episode left. So this one's a valid five star. I don't think it's a six star, but I remember being obsessed with it. And it felt just like a real story. And I loved that. Daisy Hates, The Great Undoing. This is the last, not the last, it's the second Daisy Hates book. This one we're injecting into my veins immediately. This one was so phenomenal because it's the same timeline as Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, but just in the characters from the Daisy Hates books 
point of view and what happens in the second Magnolia Parks book that's told in the second Daisy Hates book is just one of my favorite storylines ever. So good. It's just crazy seeing different point of views with the same story. And if you're wondering why the first Daisy Hates isn't on my five star reads list, I did give that one four stars because I didn't love the main couple in that one. They weren't my favorite. But the whole series, in my opinion, is like a six bajillion star read if we're just talking about the whole series. But that one book wasn't my favorite. Okay, then we have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This one is the book that's after Once Upon a Broken Heart. The next one comes out so soon. I'm so excited. This one, I think, honestly, it was a six star read. I remember reading this and I was in such a big slump, like literally couldn't pick up a book. I thought my reading journey was genuinely over. It was that bad. And I remember picking up this book and it was just so amazing. And the storyline that followed from the first one is what I wanted from the first one. Like it was a lot more of like the tension between the two characters and the fantasy fairy tale was like so amazing. The writing was great. The storyline was so fun. The ending was crazy. It was just such a well-rounded fantasy read. I was obsessed. Then we have The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is part of the Inheritance Games trilogy. And I don't remember really what happens in this one. I do remember reading it and it had like plot twists and it was fun to go along, but I honestly think I would change my rating of this one. I don't think I would still give this five stars. And I know this is in my five star reads video that I just made, but thinking back on it, like, yeah, it was fun, but I can't remember what happened in it. I feel like I'd give it like four and a half. I don't know. It was really good. I loved that trilogy so much. I love Jennifer Lynn's Barnes writing, but I don't really know if I would give it five stars still. Yeah, this one's iffy. Then we have Things We Never Got Over. This one is definitely a valid five star read. I remember reading this, my first Lucy score book. It was just like the first book that I loved the banter. I loved the setting, small town, grumpy sunshine it was just like a really good book to me and it was really fun to go along i enjoyed the story i thought it was entertaining it was just one of those books and i think it's just a valid five star like i love the little knock em out town that they're in and the, all the characters it was so good then we have confessed by colleen hoover this one was definitely the old me i don't even remember what that book was about oh this one was like the artists right was he the artist? I do remember though reading this and like loving it again because it was just like fast paced entertaining and I thought when it's like really fast paced book you can finish it quick and it's like entertaining that it's a five star. Like that was just my baseline ratings for five star reads but like it has to be something that I want everyone to read because I love it so much and that's not what this book is. Like I honestly can't even remember what's in the book. Then I have Beach Read by Emily Henry. This one believe it or not, I want injected into my veins. This book, I read it for the second time over the summer, right? A few months ago, maybe it was in a video somewhere, but it was so good the second time around. I think this also could fall under my comfort books. Like this is a book I could reread a hundred times and just like feel good about it because I loved the characters, the story, everything about it was perfect. But again, I want to inject it into my veins. I love Gus. Gus is my favorite. Then we have Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I think that's how you say it. This one is definitely a valid five-star read. It's a literary fiction taking place, I think, in the 70s? Something like that. But it was just so different, but it's also really fun. I loved the main character. I think she was like 14 or something, and she was like nannying for one of her neighbors, and they were just like free-spirited, and her family at home was like very strict almost, so she wasn't allowed to do anything, but she really found herself in the other family, and they were just like fun musicians and I loved it. I loved the setting. I loved all the characters. It was just so fun to read about. And then the last but certainly not least is Powerless by Elsie Silver. I am obsessed with the series. All of them aren't five stars, but in my opinion, it's a five star series. So that's why they're not all on here. I gave some four and a half, four point two five four, but this one was my five star. So the whole series, if you're wondering, highly recommend reading the whole series. It's, I'm obsessed. I, I tell everyone they need to read it, but Powerless is my five star read. I think I would put this in my six star reads. I know that's crazy to say, and I don't know if anyone would really expect this from me, but it was obsessed with seeing all of the other characters in this. I loved seeing Jasper's story because I was waiting for it since the first book. I loved Sloane so much. I loved the setting. The location in Chestnut Springs, the ranch. I loved their little road trips that they went on. Their background. I loved Jasper. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite. I annotated the crap out of that book. One of my favorites ever. I cannot wait for Bo's story. It comes out so soon. But okay, this is my tier ranking. And I feel like this is kind of valid. Like, this is how I felt in my head. My five star reads thinking about them, where they would fall. Like I know which ones are my favorite when I think back on five star reads and which ones are just not anymore. So now this is it in a visual a visual sense. So I definitely could have guessed what would have been an inject my, into my veins. Six star reads honestly are kind of surprising to me because some of my six star reads I don't really talk about anymore or like talk about too often or recommend them like too much I feel like. And some of them again are just not really five stars in my opinion anymore. But on some days they feel like a five star and some days they don't. But obviously the this was the old me are not really on that level anymore. But the I changed my rating Maybe not either. I think just from comfort books and up are all my five stars and whatever's below that I probably would have different feelings on and I do have different feelings on, but this is how I feel. These are my five stars and looking at them, I love these books. Well, not the ones on the bottom really. I mean, I do. Like, Things We Have in the Light, I loved that book. I just don't think it's like a five star, but the series is a five star. 
do you know what? I don't know. It's hard to really explain my, my thought process. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do that. I don't know. I thought it would just be interesting to see the rankings of my five stars just to see how I feel about them now because again, all my five stars are five stars for different reasons or they're no longer five stars. I feel like as a reader, I change a lot because I read so many books and I feel like I have different like things to compare it to and just find new things I love in books and my opinions and my feelings towards books change as myself as a reader changes. So it's very interesting to go back and see my old five stars or just like my recent five stars and like the comparisons and stuff it's just fun seeing myself as a reader change over time and since my beginning of my journey to now i'm just like such a different reader and i like different things in books now and that's it and that's that i feel like i've grown so much as a reader so it was really fun to do this so again i'm gonna link this down below if you guys want to do it i don't know if you can change the pictures in it but you can make your own with these tiers or something i'm not sure but i will link it down below for you guys if you want to try it out i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you did let me know if there's anything else you want me to tier rank i really can't think of anything else i think i've done a few in the past but if I, you want me to redo some of them because it was like a few years ago I feel like it wasn't recent maybe it was last year I don't know but I could redo some if you want me to do a little updated version just let me know thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed let me know if you did and I will see you hopefully in the next one bye